into some of the technical aspects, I make sure that we involve the Bible. Now, by the way, anybody who says that life needs a handbook, um, I had a guy on Thursday of last week who I had no idea what a 616 number calls me up, right, and chews me out on how I am not a strong Christian because I teach martial arts as an outreach ministry. Because nowhere in the Bible does it state that we need to be violent towards people. And a couple of the high schoolers got thrown out. Um, and then I asked him who he was, and he said, it doesn't matter who he is. And then I'm like, oh, look, good luck. But, <laughs> so for those people who have that mindset, I'm going to give this as my little mini devotional for you guys. In the Bible, it says that the body is a temple, and within the temple dwells the Holy Spirit of Jesus. Correct? Look at any other temple, castle, or place that has a large building. How often do they have guards and staff there ready to defend that castle, defend that fort all the time? So, what is within a lot of the castles and banks and stuff? A monetary value. The Bible says that our relationship with God is more precious than silver or gold. So, if we're putting people up to guard against thieves, should we not prepare ourselves physically to defend our temples? I would think so. There are numerous reference points. And by the way, there's a meme going around Facebook that I love. It says, it says uh, if anybody asks you what Jesus would do, bear in mind flipping tables and chasing people with whips are not outside of the realm of possibilities. Um, my scripture passage for tonight is uh, Psalms 18, verse 39. Um, we talked in Kempo and the Kabate Jutsu, especially what I get into a lot, about really you do a lot of damage to your opponent. Again, if I am picking up you, you want to stop me from hurting you. You've got a kid on the way. You're not going to sit here and want to trade blows with me. You want to drop me as quick as possible and disengage me and done. So when we look at that, rather than that saying really your hands would damage somebody, I mean, if you can get away with it, it's better to check them and you so when we do this, we want to look at what is necessary to defeat our opponent. I say defeat. This is a whole different entity. Now, if someone's attacking you, are they loving you? Not typically, right? Okay, there we are. You arm me with strength for battle. You made my adversaries bow at my feet. You made my enemies turn their backs and flight, and I destroyed my foes. Not defeated. Not defeated. Destroyed. So if you look at those, and other verses actually say destroy those who hated me. If someone comes at you, as I've already said, it's not, they're not in peace and love. They're out to do damage to you. They don't like you very much. Hatred might be a, a, a very broad term. But how often do we use that term for, oh, I hate pizza? So if you look at that as being something that's a disgusted position, it says right here that we are given strength for battle. You know, I destroy those that hated me, those who are my enemies. So if we, and that's one of many that can be found in here. So if you turn into the seven martial arts into the Christianity, does it say that I just beat Joe Schmo on the street for no apparent reason? No. They came at me. They came at me. So in that retrospect, we can do this. And I really wish the guy on the phone, if he's going to chastise me for being a Christian martial artist and question my or your guys' Christian viewpoints in a martial arts program, read this before you chastise me. Because the Bible itself says that we have that. So everybody kind of circle out a little bit. Bring you in. No, oh, because I know what's coming. Yeah, yes. it's like, oh, we're going to do this. Um, Dance of Death is one of the, what do we put that? Orange, orange belt? Orange belt. Orange belt techniques. Now, in Kempo, 
versus Taekwondo. In Taekwondo, if I say, show me a technique, the technique in Taekwondo would be single, kick, punch, what have you. In Kempo, we don't like that. To us, that's a tool. A technique in Kempo is you hit on a stop motion comprised of a toolbox. It's the best way I can describe it. We're not going to hit you. We're not going to stop hitting you until you stop moving or you're incapable of moving. By the way, that's what you're dead. Yeah, so just you don't kill anyone. Yeah. Unless they have. For purposes of this discussion, no one ever dies in Kempo. Have fun. <laughs> Except for an important group, but that wasn't that whole thing. Small case. Markers. Okay. So. In Dan's death, he's going to come with just a simple front leg or obverse straight punch to my torso. So the first thing that we have to do in Kempo is get out of the way. Because best, as Miyagi said, best defense for punch is no be where punch come. If punch come here, I'd be here. If punch come here, I'd be here. But, ah, rewind. Before I do, before we do things to death, let me talk about <laughs> yeah, yeah, I still need you. Not now. Yes, I do. No. no. We did we talk. Alright, go. No kidding. No So he's gonna be punch. Now. Hey. Yeah, but he's a big dude. Yes, he is. But no. Not really. He's a nice guy. No. Anyway. Moral and Hardy. Yeah, yeah. Who's on the punch? Well, okay. Yeah. Anyway, so, I obviously you don't want to be here, correct? So this is going to be two options. I can be over here, or I can be over here. I want to be here. He wants to be here. I don't want to be here. So, if I want to be here, which way am I going to go? White belt. Which way am I going to go? Your side. Black belts. If I like him, where do I go? This side. Ooh. We got a quarter. <laughs> this side. The reason being is if I come to this side of my pair, guess what? My options to hurt him are limited. I'm li it's a self-limiting condition when I come here. Because I can hurt him and kick him. Or I can just go, you suck. <gasps> yeah. Plus, isn't the other way a little bit more dangerous for you? No, no. Nope. More dangerous. Here's, here's, here's the thing for answering that question. If we're looking at a straight line coming at us, if you have a train coming down the tracks, here, dead, here, dead, here, safe, train goes by. Here, safe, train goes by. This, ah! dead. <laughs> Man, you also play great. All right, so work, working outside keeps me, keeps him a little bit less likely to get hurt. Working the inside, uh -oh. see what I did? Here, if you look at the diagram of the body, I've got about roughly 20% of the target, roughly. You guys fall in that wonderful rear foot stance. Got about 20% of the whack. So 20%, 85 to 90. What have I got? Face, heart, lungs, liver, everything. Point. What paramedic would think I'd be able to just do this by touch? Do I have to think about number? No, 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 no. So I've got all this open, right? It's all dependent on where and what I'm doing. If I come to the outside, sometimes, you know, here I can just roll this back into a lock. And here you can still do it, but now look where I'm at. Look at this guy. He's got all of that. So if I come to the inside, whatever my attack is, it's going to have to be quick and close. Okay. So anytime you're inside this close quarter circle, this is where your damage is going. You just got all this fun stuff in here. And I can tell you the personal experience. River shots are incredible. They're Think very ask, ask the black belts. <laughs> you target right here, or you take it, you're sparring, and you're doing that not legally full contact at a tournament. We all we've all been there. <laughs> what do we all try to what do they always try to target on? Little box about this big, like about this big. Because they know if they hit that, you're going to go. Because what they're doing is they're pushing your liver to the base of your lung. All that air that's in there gets expelled. You lose all your back up, and you're going. When you look at your your offense, think about looking at the field. 
you've got new, straight ahead of me, not usually really good at this. Well, hang on, since I'm defending, he's going to be my ball. Oh, yeah, okay, he's ball. I'm at the center of the park, I don't know. No. No one tell me what that is. No. Take care of yourself. Better go. 12 o'clock. 3 o'clock. 2. Let's do, let's do the four points first. 12, 3, 6, because who in here is military? Check your 6. 9. Okay. When you're doing this technique, it's, it's presumed that if, I, if he moves to here, if he moves over here, 12 goes over to that one. So now it's 12. That also works for most.
Okay. 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 He's already done the hole. Yeah, I know. I need that <sighs> See, seriously. So, a couple options. We can start out from here. But I like a transitional pass, so as I'm coming down here, I'm going to loop in and just switch that hand out. And I'm going to go here. Reason for this, I can control this leg. Because right so now. You can go in from that side, he can try to hit. So when I'm doing this movement, I want to be over here. As I take him down, because now he's got kicked on himself. And then we just Yay! Flip. <laughs> flip him. The other, the other thing that we can do from this position is I prevent him from holding his foot back. Why? Because watch what happens from the other side. From the other side. If I, here, I have a base still, and I can bend my knee in, and I can wiggle my foot out. On this side, yeah, not so much. And then the other thing, if he pulls in, and if I do pull in, guess what he I goes? control the knee. So from, as he pulls in, Oof. <laughs> now, come back and show the, the, the turnout. Now, the other thing I can do is I just jump in over the top of him. Because I'm mean. Oh, that's not. Yes. Here, here, okay, here, if I'm one of those, <laughs> one of those jiu jitsu guys, I may <laughs> be able to roll my way out of this. But watch what happens when he shifts his leg. No matter where I, I have absolutely, if I go this way, he's going to collapse on the inset. And I'm going to scream because my leg broke. If I go this way, all he's going to do is apply body weight. If I try to pull him in, he goes into top control, and out I am in a world of hurt. Also, notice where I've got him pinned at? Not across the quad. Right across the top of the knee. Oh yeah, that's the, that's the money shot. <laughs> Which means... <laughs> Good. I am that. Okay. <laughs> I thought you were being exaggerated until you started turning around the face. I'm like, oh, I actually no, I didn't know why I was being serious. <laughs> that's the surgically rebuilt one. Oh. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, go on. There you go. And if I had to go right across the knee, that prevents him. If I'm here, if he tries to bend this foot up at all, I can't. I literally he's not going to be able to move this leg. So literally, and now, mind you, if I wanted to be mean, which I'm not going to, move up here so it doesn't hurt. I can literally, from this position, just yeah, it hurts. <laughs> roll weight in, and then we still got everything else available. So when you get your tape down on that leg, you start with the knees. When we're here, we're on that side of the body. So as we get that sweep, we're pulling the guy down in here. So he's right on our land. We just switch that leg position. And now I'm on an in, in inward movement. So as I have him hooked, if he pulls down, I just drop that weight as I lean in and just bust him in the face. So as you saw later, uh, I thought it was it. But it hurts. It really hurts. Because you pin that knee to the ground, it stops you from being able to bring that up. It takes so very little bit of weight to stop that knee from going. Because when you deal with leg work, most of the time you start out either standing up or in a seated position. Most of the time, if you watch people building leg muscles, they don't start here. It doesn't work. So when we put that weight on that knee, there's not a lot of uh, muscle musculature that can actually can contract enough to bring that um, this was your <laughs> Your turn. Woohoo! Yeah. So, rest in peace. What we're going to do just to put up. Sweet. Boom. All right, cool. So, if I'm just here on his knee, I'm going to I'm really not applying much to this. Uh, now, if I actually put, like, say I put like a quarter of my weight into it, I'm going to pick up for that. Toast. So it takes so very little effort for me to stop that leg from moving just by if I have the position here and I'm not going to really hurt you. Maybe. Maybe. But if I'm sitting here and he goes and he goes to move and I pin that knee down, I pick that foot. He's not going to be able to really work this and I'm just going to have to put that back down for him. So if I'm sitting here now, mind you, he's pulled that leg back. What does that do with my weight? 
shifts it right across. So now he's not going anywhere with this leg. This is not nice. And then at the same time, as he pulls in, I shift my weight out. No, please don't. We're still pinned. I can literally take that elbow right across the face. Not that I want to. Also, that knee is awfully close to where he doesn't want it to be. So once you get that knee pinned to the floor, getting up is not typically an option. And then you always help your partner back up. Who wants to throw? Please. Okay. We already covered kind of the angles of offense and defense and getting people over our ankle. So this is a movement out of Aikijutsu, which is kind of fun. Um, the objective is just trying to not play um, So as we do this, what we're going to do is we are going to connect body into movement. So as he throws his punch on steps in, I'm going to come here. As I do this, I'm going to connect underneath this gate. And I'm going to bring this hand and I'm going to palm up. As this goes in, this is very circular in movement. So as I bring this through, I'm going to have my hand here and here. If you need two hands, grab across the wrist so your thumbs are aligned with each other. I'm going to tuck underneath this arm and I'm going to come right here. From this position, I'm just going to literally take a step back. And bring him there and look how far away I am. Nice. He's our school ninja. <laughs> I, used to do, I used to be able to do that when I was young. <laughs> I used to be able to do that when I was like six months old. Yeah, I used to do that when I was young and delusional. So, again, as we bring that movement around, we're here. We're literally just going to take this up and tuck it into here. From this position, I step back and bring his hand straight down. And I'm in and out. Now, again, you can defend, but just don't let this get lost. All right? Make sense? Now, I'm going to pick on you for a second. So, if you got the guys, you get the feeling that you're going to be used a lot. You know, the crazy thing is, is the reason I'm picking on him is everybody, when I do these, they're always small with me and everybody's like, well, maybe you should pick on someone, you're all set. Well, it's not I appreciate that. The Lord giveth. So, <laughs> if you guys. He comes into this punch. We're going to come in here. We're going to bring this down. Now, where he's aiming, I'm going to come up here and grab. From this position, I turn in and I bring my hand here and up. From this position, I take my step down and bring him in. Now, how much of that did you give me? Not a ton. Not a ton. You know why? He cooperates because he doesn't want to lose my hands. But once I get here, I can press out and go. Now, the thing is, if I'm attacking you, and you spin in and get this movement and slow me down, and you're like, spoink, and go, what does he have to do? If, he, if, if, if I were you, and he, and he was hit, what does he have to do to be a threat to you now? Get up. So and are you going to let him? Here, here's the thing, is that if he's, if he's there, and he punches, and we're here, boom, I touch the outside, bring his arm up here, I get my drop in. By the time he gets up, I'm gone. Because here's the thing. Cam, you. <laughs> You've got one opportunity to shop. Also, when you're looking at somebody who is in the modality to attack you, they're looking for their victims. They'll say he's trying to steal you. By the way, when you're this big, don't worry about that. I'm big enough. Um, but if they're trying to steal you or whatever, they want their victim to do two things quiet and compliant. How can you guys scream in comments? Whatever your PI is for the lunch. If you're making noise, what are you doing in that general situation? Bring in attention. So if I am trying to steal you, do I want you screaming your head off and fighting back? Yeah. Why? Because even the, most, even the most hardened criminal really doesn't say, oh, well, I want to go to prison. Unless you're stupid. I, by the way, I want to finish sheriff's department. Um, there, let, let me build on what you just said for just a second. When you talk about stealing somebody, stealing kids, especially if you've got younger brothers or sisters, or you teach a, an anti bully class, whatever it might be, for the black belts, or you're teaching that stuff. The National Institute of Health. The NIH years ago did a study in conjunction with 
behavioral science as a study of quantum, the FBI, your criminal minds, folks, the guys that carry a lot of dark stuff on their shoulders. They went around and they interviewed serial rapists that were in prison. And they asked a simple question to every single one of them. They said, what would have stopped this? What would have stopped your last attack to get you in prison? You know what they all said? If my victim had said no forcefully. Almost two-thirds of them said that. And the reason is, you think about it, how many of them, how many, how many of us have little kids? Like for raising the little kids, the ones back here. What do they like to do? They like to go. <laughs> right? And what do we as responsible parents do? We go, no! Say it in a forceful manner. And when you're that age, your brain is like a sponge. And you hear that forceful word no and imprint somewhere in that reptilian brain part that we all have. So that when you later in life, you say it forcefully enough, it may not stop it. To let's be honest, it won't stop it. But what it will do is give it a pause for a second. So they'll hear no, and you go, they go, okay, and they keep going. If you're a black belt, or in the and you're quick, that little beep beep is on you. So that's where that comes from. It's imprinted from we the age. Now, for my kids, by the time you get to 17, you've forgotten what no means, and you just gotta go hand right now. <laughs> He's met my son, he knows. So, two things quiet and compliant. And you know, screaming, no, it's the same thing. Don't ever yell for help. Kids are driven by the schoolyards. You know how many times the little boys are. Go help me, help me, help! You immediately check out. So if you yell fire, that gets attention. Because most people, if you yell and help, now these people don't want to get involved. Because well, what if he's got a gun? How do you got a gun on your show? So they don't want to get involved. But if, if you, you yell fire, fire, everybody wants to come watch a building burn. Or figure out. Well, maybe if, if, if you hear from the parking lot and you hear fire, I don't want cars parked out that way. You be like, oh, maybe it's my car. So, yell fire, yell no, as he's saying. That is such a huge thing. It doesn't matter how big you are, if all of a sudden you're running and someone's like, no, 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 that, that he said, split second, it doesn't matter whether you're green belt, red, the white one that just left, you need just that quick second, no, what, bam, oh, I'm so sorry. Was that your space? So, quiet and compliant. So when you get into a lot of your movements, make sure that you're striking with a little bit of force. That's why when you get into one step, you always hear that loud scream. That's why it's in forms. Because we're trying to make you loud so you're not quiet or compliant. They call a battle cry, and that's also written in the scripture passages too, by the way. Um, who stir zeal, raise the battle cry, and triumph over his enemies. Trust me, find it. It's in there. Um, so anyway, so as you're getting that movement going through, and you're dropping your opponents, think about being loud with that. And if you're fighting back, they're not going to sit there and want to keep continuing. Because if I'm going to steal you, or in this case, a sexual assault, I'm not going to sit here and let you listen and scream your head off and say, oh, gotcha, who wants to get caught? So when you're getting these movements, think about what comes natural. So if you're going to fight back, again, same size guy, if you throw him down coming back to my point, and you're getting up and moving away, and then you add some guttural to that, trust me, you're going to just scream your head off. It's going to get your attention. So if I'm throwing him, and he comes in, I bring his block out, and so if I bring that block in, and I bring him around, come out here, and as I step back, you always hear this a lot, so it's like, that's not going to get any more. Oh, it's two people. <laughs> but as you're going in and you get that throw, you can add something more to it. If you ever listen to Aikido practitioners, you always hear them yelling and you throw something. It's like, ah! Why? Because it's awesome. Also, key guys build strength. You're going to need a little bit of strength to throw this dude. So anything you do to build up that strength, that key eye is awesome. If you have a great board, you're going to have this. Ever listen to a guy pick up like 450? Pounds like a deadlifter. How many times do you hear this? Never watch the Olympics. 
It's always. Was that, was that your foot or did he hit uh, like the, in, the intestinal meridian? <laughs> if I really want to throw his body into all kinds of craziness. Oh, yes. One, two, three. Oh, he doesn't, his body right now doesn't know which way to go. I would hear it. It's a fantastic thing. The baby would now, like, what's going on? We've all seen this. Everybody's, please tell me everybody's seen at least one Steven Seagal movie in your life. Oh, yeah. This, this, this crap, don't do this. If you just grab here and do a wrist lock this way, it doesn't hurt. And all he has to do is what? Bend the hinge and look where I'm at. 
grab here. Okay. You grab here and do this. Now I have to hold over that arm. Good job. Lock the hand. That's encouraging because he is hard to oh, yeah. get anything done. Now, this is fun, right? You enjoyed that, right? Oh, yeah, say yes. <laughs> say, say, yes, sir. I <laughs> For my next trick, he's going to sell my knee. We're going to do ventriloquist tricks. <laughs> this finger, fantastic. This finger, yeah, okay. That's nice. This finger, yeah, yeah. But this one, oh my. This is the magic finger. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is the master key to open the whole body. Okay? Look. Everything I've got here. So if I hand off here, and I have my dominant side, and I go here, break the elbow, or I can just be really nice, take a liver shot. Now, there's a wonderful technique in Kempo, it's called gathering clouds. Remember that, Sensei Brooks? Yep. Mm -hmm. Watch the modification for gathering clouds. It's a roundhouse punch, so he's coming with that big red punch, right? But if I've got this for my, for my hand off from the block, here, And then I hand on. Key principle. Hand on to hand off. This is my dominant hand. Hand on, hand off. Okay? So as that punch comes in, here's the Hajib okay, slap and grab. So he comes in, I'm here. So once we're here, we're going to kick right in the guts. For those that are kicker guys, we're going to drill this and we'll catch him right in the gut. If I hit him, BAM! Where's his head go? If I kicked you in the stomach, where does your head go? Down. If I kicked you in the stomach, where would your head go? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> By the way, playing with this prevents me from actually having to kick. Once we're here, I bring this up, boom. All of How many of y'all have this in common? Anybody, everybody right inside crossing? Okay. Can you please tell me you've got this? You don't have that in Not yet, it is. Good. <laughs> so, anyway, it's like a wedding this. Everybody said, oh, I can axe kick him? Sure, I can. Yeah. No, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to use that inside crossing kick. I'm going to catch him right across the other shoulder. So, as I do, it's like going here. Once he's down here, I connect in and re the hammer. <laughs> so as that punch comes in, I'm pointing. Boom. Hook. Bring him around. Once I'm here. Oh, I see. And bring us up. Now, if I really want to be completely weird, I just go in here and I start oh. the, I cut off the blood flow to the neck, too. For those of you that are, that's where we'll leave this one. Just Fine, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. Grab a partner, give that a whirl. All right, so that punch comes in, where, boom, boom, I'm here and here. We set that kick, bam. Once I come in and hook around, boom, I bring it around here. Notice how my rotation comes in. Can I go around the other side? Yes. From here, I'm gonna use him to stop me from falling. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Yep. So as you're doing this, that movement is fluid. Again, it's not, we haven't covered it yet. Uh, Kempo and the, in Karate, we call it Sen no Sen, or attack in the attack. So there's not a block punch. When you do one steps, he throws his technique and work. Block and punch. I'm gonna cover sen, the sen no Sen is block punch or block ass punch. So, or don't bother blocking it up. We cover, move the angles. So if he steps and punches, here's where I'm in danger, right? So if he's aiming to hit me, this is not where I want to be. But do I have to block him? No. So he steps back and he starts to throw the punch. Seven steps here. Ole! So, not and, but with. So when he comes in and throws that, with. So, as you bring that crescent around, it's with a laying on bar, not 
and. So as that punch comes in, we're here. One, two, three. Four. Your kids, you couldn't hear it. Oh, I, I felt it. That's why I stopped doing it. Now, once you get this position, and I'm not going to do this real because this is really neat. Once I get this position, everybody likes to take that arm bar and put it across your groin. Get it right. Now, here's the thing. Men, not good. So if I'm here and I'm pulling his elbow across my crotch, go ahead and do a bicep curl. Where's that knee go? Ooh, yeah, no thanks. That really hurts. So if I pull back, I'm going to take this lovely little elbow to the groin. Not pleasant. So what I do instead is we take the elbow and we're going to place it right, like, you know where your ties are right on your uniforms? Put his elbow by your tie. Now if he pulls back, he's just digging into my hip. Now, from this position, I can lift up and pop him out, or please don't do this for me now. Remember that on and off he talks about? On, off, freehand. Uh. <laughs> Except there was something in the way. <laughs> but that would not be good for him. <laughs> so as you get that float through, it's not going in and stop motion. You just continue to go through. He will brave, brave He'll feel <laughs> This is why this is important. Let me tell you like my great granddaddy told me. There is a fine line between bravery and stupidity. Raise your so, baby, <laughs> as, you, as you bring that loop through, it's just literally going in, cutting, and then literally as you bring the arm. I'm already here using you as my leverage point to break you. Good. Sweet. He's here. And he's choking me because he's crazy. I'm coming in here. Bam. Hi. So as I'm here, I come in, shift, elbow, breakfast. Anytime that you think. Anytime that you do a kata or a movement, everybody's oh, kata evolves by doing this. So I know you guys have a form similar to. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. How often is the attack going to come from nine and three? Not very often, right? Because I'm just sitting here not alone doing this. Are you seriously? The only way this attack happens, by the way, if you haven't seen it, <laughs> Most of the time, it's, it's coming from the direction. Anytime that you have a step in any cup, whether it be Korean or Okinawan or Japanese, all that is telling you is that I am moving to that position. So again, the likelihood that Bon Sensei is going to step and punch me from there you know what happens if he steps and punches from that direction? I'm gonna get hit in the face, I'll be honest. That's what's gonna happen. Because most of all, I can see him out of my peripheral. See, his vision is based on the voice, so if he's quiet, you can see him. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, when we look at Kata, and he, oh, do a low level kick. So he comes in. Does this yeah. make realistic sense? Or, and he's gonna insta kick. Does that make more sense? All the kata is telling you is that I am moving. Again, let's take that straight form. I'm here. Be nice. So if he goes to kick, what does kata say? We step forward, right? Where did my block go? Nowhere. Where does his foot go? All up in my business. All kinds of. So, the, the movement doesn't say that we are going in and actually aggressing against a person. It says, I am stepping in to this position. Anytime that you move, you move to something else. 360 degree turns are not always built upon me dancing around somebody. I'm not going to sit here like, oh, here it is, I punch you. And all of a sudden, Senior professor decides he's going to throw a kick. He throws his kick. 
was so quick you didn't see it. I'm just not sure. <laughs> so he's going to throw a kick or move in a some sort. This is going to be my technique in this, right? <laughs> Seriously? Does that make any sense at all? No, because why not? Like, he's going to go for it. Yeah, no. When you look at turns, I think it was more of a throw or a redirection. Um, for those that have this movement, when you look at Shotokan as an art, your block sometimes isn't where your block is at. This is not the block. This is your block. So if we're dealing with so he's got two shoulders up on my hand. He's just going this. Crazy. And he's going to shake me right now. This makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? He grabs my shoulders when I say. So we reach in, right? As we get into this movement. Watch this upper hand movement. Bam! Oh, about that sucks, doesn't it? Because do our hand, do we do? Stay. Stay. Do we do this in common? No, hand comes out, right? So, so he's got his grip. I can go under, I can go this way, bam, oh my goodness. If you really want to have fun with somebody, I'm not really going to do this because this is me. Just give me a nice little slap. What's he thinking about right now? Me smacking him in the face. Why doesn't he think about it anymore? That grip. So as I smack him in the face, I put his hand up, just like the mirror. I'm going to take that little pinky. And watch, step off a low block. Roll, roll. What's my next move? Step in the punch, right? Sorry. <laughs> I know, right? Hold it. So our next, our next movement says we step in. We, our next move says step and punch, right? Yes. Okay, so I can step and drill her in the face. As I do this, and I just send him into her, so she ain't gonna do nothing. As I, like, da, 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 da. Ooh, beep, beep, beep. Bam! Oh, look, it comes for the ride. Ain't that nice of him? Or. Option two is we bring this down. Instead of punching forward, we <coughs> step forward and bring this. Now notice how the shoulders all nice and all stuff. See how I got that nice little bowl going on right here? Yeah, it's because I'm twisting this joint out. What if I was to step forward and punch in and just blow his junk out? I believe the word you're looking for right now is ow. <laughs> so then I come around and then hoo hoo hoo, whatever else I decide to do. Is it my turn? <laughs> so, as we're stepping in, your kata's have more than one application. So I'm going to throw the punch, ha ha, and then all of a sudden, I'm like, yeah! Seriously? Um, we'll pick on Sensei Mountain. You stay right there, just a question. If we have Sensei Nat step and punch, that punch me first, first, and I do this, no! Oh, really? You're going to step and punch at me too, right? Seriously? Uh, no. So if we look at the movement behind this as we're here and we get that punch, we reach up. We're coming. Oh, we're low block. Right? Right. I pick on him because I want to. And he throws his punch and I'm bam. Where do I bury this fist? I want something soft and squishy. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to drill him right in his old plexus. Now, what do we do with this hand? Chambers, right? Chamber. Boom! Now, what happens to his head? I bury this in this whole fault his head. Watch this. This is fun. This is known as common nine. I step back. Anybody know the principle where the head goes? The body follows. Watch as I step back. Oh! So if we're dealing with the variables of one behind you, you get. <laughs> Cloning him. <laughs> Wish I could clone myself and send me to work and I'd stay home. So, if we're dealing with that modality being more than one attack, again, we're not dealing in Jurassic Park. I'm not going to have the guy over here and the guy over here. This is more realistic. So, if I'm making this movement quick and Sensei Bond throws his punch out, and I want Jakey by the hair, but he throws his punch out and yeah, and I block it on here. Bam! And I reach up and get his hair. And I'm just going to be uniform so I don't hurt him. But if I'm dealing with you coming in at the next moment, so your body throws a punch, watch what happens as you try to do anything stupid over there. Hey. 
throw, 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 my final party before I give you to him, 270 returns. So much fun. Um, who knew this? Uh, at what form do you, what level do you guys teach some similar to this? That little box, that punch? First one. All right, three, three punches, and then we do this, and we turn and load. We'll pick that. Oh, that one, yeah, come here. Come here, come here. We have, we have a beat up on him, man. Yeah, we have. We're good, we're gonna do it again. So, he comes in, he throws his punch, because he's crazy. Dangoon. Bang! Where's his head cross? I hit him. Watch this. Watch this. This is position way behind the technique. It's called Onumari Waza, which means big sleep. Better translation, eternal sleep. I come in. I'm like, like, our, our <laughs> techniques come in. After we strike, we go. After we punch, we're here. And then we turn them over, right? As they turn 270 degrees, Jasper. Yes, so everybody, when you make his tombstone, it's Jasper. <laughs> That's one here, right? Watch this. <coughs> crunchy, 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 and one dead Jasper. Oh my goodness, guys, we just killed him, and this is a white belt one. Rock roll. Make sure they That's amazing. That's your Jasper. He's like. I'm not punching at this dude. <laughs> five minutes ago, you knew who that was white belt for. I think which one of the five minutes you knew that. Anytime that you get into a separate form, it turns into something different. He was at one of my seminars down when we were at the Intercontinental Martial Arts Union was doing their annual seminar down in Kentucky. Literally, he had me down this one here. It's actually co written by Miyamoto Masashi, who was known for saying fighting with two swords. That entire kata, ask him, he'll tell you. Is actually a sword form where I am disarming your happiness from a sword, caving your sword, and killing you with it. The samurai did this a thousand times a day. One. Two. Only 998 more to go before I can move on to another technique for the day. Anybody, see, anybody have you ever actually held a real cup of Katana for those of them. All right, do you hold on to it like this, like a baseball bat? Not typically, right? There's a reason. There's, there's a handle distance, right? So and we're gonna pick on him. Like if he cuts like, oh, a ten minutes, he's gonna cut the head off because he's crazy. So hold your swords. All right, gotcha. So he goes to try to cut. Oh, how you doing? Is this look familiar? Suba. Me. Remember, what are we doing with samurai armor? What's not protective samurai armor? This shit! Bing! Stay. Point. Samurai armor. Chest plate, stomach, pleat, hinge. Well, thank you. Right between the handguard. <laughs> Bing! Right in the armor. Look what happens to his head. Outside hammer fist. Decapitation! Now I got so, your sword. This would be, it's our equivalent to Wanyo. So, we look at that, and I just destroyed you. It's fine. Um, I'm actually going to turn this over before we run out of time. Maybe if I'm invited back, I'll come and we'll use Kakanaz and actually show you guys what you're doing in that form and give you an introduction to actually the traditional reasoning behind this. Anybody want to want to do this? Seriously. And then this movement. Or this is you. <laughs> yeah! No! Is it okay if we go a couple minutes over? Oh, yeah. Okay. I get paid by the hour. You get paid by the hour? Yeah. Let me take on. He's already dead. Yeah, he's dead. I can't use him anymore. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's right. I killed Jasper. He's Before I pick one, those of you at their summer camp this year and for since they were last year, remember. Mace of Ascension, or Ascending Mace, and 
Did we, I remember, it's, I'm old and I don't remember what I had for one day. <coughs> did we go over drawing the bow? Yep. We did talk about drawing the bow? Okay. There's a way to marry those together. Okay. And it's a lot of fun. And you get to be the priest. That's right. In Kempo, mace means clinch for fist. Just think about it. There's the ball of the mace. There's the kempo. Bow just refers to no air. So if I say I'm drawing the bow, what do you think I'm doing? I'm drawing hyperextending something, right? Because I'm pulling the bow straight. This goes to that concept in Japanese words, Shidoshi of that sin no sin with not and. In Kempo we call it with not and. We also say that we use, my students like to make slang out of everything when I give them their manuals, so they'll do the stuff. And one of my kids wrote something that was actually brilliant. He says it's called Dolphins. Dolphins, D-O-F-F-N-S-E, Dolphins. Defensive offense. Within every strike there's a block, within every block there's a strike. It's a natural marriage. So, Dolphins. It's in this end, with not in Keep your mind. So, if she comes in with this punch, angle of attack takes me to the inside this time, right? And my hand goes here. Poking talent, punch. Okay, here. This is where Mason Ascension comes in. Along with drawing the bow. Drawing the bow basically is just this. Okay? It's a nice way to straighten her out, get her head out of the way, so I can get control. We're going to worry about that in a minute. With not and. 45 degree angle. See where my hand is? Now we go back to drawing the bow. Look at my feet. I'm in the cat stance, by the way. Here. Do you think that arm is going to keep going in that position very much longer? Probably not. But one of the nice things about this, you can't go like he said, pull the arm. Lots of little circles, right? So I'm going to circle going this way. And I'm here. Now I'm going to get this way. And then we can back off. Good job. So I ain't done with you. <laughs> this generation is <laughs> So when she comes in, I'm going to go to the inside of your transitional cat. Here. Bam. Where the body, where the head goes, the body follows. Right here. And I like to just use two fingers to lock. Pull your arm back. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> All right. Everybody pair up and try that. Hook. Here. All right. Body mechanics. It's about understanding how the body moves and moving against itself. Certain joints don't like to move certain ways. When he, for instance, if he does a straight drag, he, hyper, he locks that. Like you know, she said something like this. Yeah. I can go this way, he's going to be able to lock. I can go this way, he can fight. But when I come here, there ain't no fight. That diagonal, that body doesn't like it. Anything you can do to an arm, you can do to a leg. If this doesn't like a diagonal, can you imagine what this feels like? Now he's giving me all of this. Was that him? Something. Yeah. <laughs> well, he tips up his, his, his cat and his thigh around me, around my foot, so I'm like, really? Yeah. That's not so like, you didn't break me. I didn't break me, did I? We're trying to, we're, we're trying right. to break me. I did that. I broke him one day. Grab his finger by his touch. Wrong way. <laughs> Sorry, you over it. You would pay me the time, I don't know. Ah! What's that for? Now that was what that means. Oh, that was So when we understand the angles, you can work that into your various patterns. Now, having some Taekwondo experience a day or two, in your you guys do Chanji for white belt? Correct. Okay, so you guys didn't monkey around with the, the order. Yeah. Or did you? Chanji, Dangun, Dosan, Wanyo, Yoko, Jungun, Tege, Warang. Yep. Okay. Yep. When you're in Chanji and you're doing this position, right? What is this? 
But what else could be? My belt. Back fist. Runner. Always remember there's always a strike and a block and block the strike if you know where to look for it and know how to insert it in the right place. Shidoshi, you got anything else you want to go over? <laughs> yeah, you actually. I want to get that. <coughs> For those that were here earlier where we did that little, little pole cross with the back pocket. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, no, that's not. So if he grabs static again, we covered earlier about reaching for our wallet. For those that are right handed, if you're lefty, then reach for my wallet. No. So again, we want that spider man grip. So as we go in, instead of just pulling here and bringing him, we're going to come with snow scan on him. So as I do this, I'm going to step with this movement. So as I go in, I'm going to bring him around here. Once he's here, and I start his motion, I want to grab hold of his thumb. Hand on, hand off. So once I bring him around, from that point, notice how he kept moving. I stopped, just like this. From that point, I'm going to step the opposing way, bring his hand up, and connect. So, as he does, now you can do this off a punch too if you choose to. So the punch comes, I'm already just going to guide around here, and it's a little easier to punch, but the But the second he goes in, his motion continues. So if he throws his punch, I just bring him around this one. Thing. He continues. Again, what did I do? He stopped. So, as he got the grip, Spider-Man grip, I bring him around, I stop. And we bring him down. Now, the reason we call it candle on it, if you have a candlestick in your hand and the wind blows, what do you do? Oh no! <laughs> it's not like you look at the reason. <laughs> so that's that general movement. Off a of punch, it's the exact same thing. I drag him around here, I let him stop. And we're here. From this position, we just get that elbow joint. No sort of said that. Yeah, like this. Now the only bad thing with this is you need to break that bridge real quick because if not, he's going to bite you in the gap. So, for what we're going to do, we're not going to take out the punch. So, as this comes in, spider man grip, we're going to bring him around. As soon as we pull, we step back. My hand's going to connect into the thumb. We're going to stop. I'm going to turn back the other way and bring this down. Now, if we're dealing with Dealing with you're a big boy. The taller, do you? <laughs> big boy. That same thing applies. So even being big, again, if I pull forward, he can resist this. <clears throat> and he pulls me. But if I take him to my back pocket, how's they say in the board? Oh, resistance is futile. So that's a star trek. Hey, big boy. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Spider-Man grip. Is this really what it's called? No. But for all intents and purposes. It sounds cool. It does sound cool. Spider-Man grip. So as I'm here, I'm stepping back and bringing him to me. That body comes here. Once I get this, it's literally step back. Step back. From this point, if you're throwing him, trust me, this is not power. This is skeletal manipulation. Either he falls or his arm comes off. Body will generally do this. For you. And go. Don't be trying to. Yeah! When I come to the summer camp, I get a lot of people come up to me after I get done teaching. They go, how did you do this? How was that so natural to you? And this is how. You have to start very simply, so kind of everybody gather around where you can see what we're doing, because you're all going to pair off and do this. This is not about... Jesse, the way of the camera. <laughs> this is not about... This is about cooperation between you and your partner, not competition between you, or you and your opponent. Competition in this is going to be bad, because you're never, neither of you are going to train it or learn anything. Watch what we do. Can you roll your sleeve up so you can see the arm position now? He's going to step to my ends, or his outstep to my outstep. Now we're going to come this way. Look at the hand positions. Hook and pull. Hook and 
Sorry. Oh, too much. Yeah. A little too much. Okay. As you're doing this, you're guiding in. Notice how our hands are in the same position on each other. When you get here, you're going to pull your elbow down, adding isometric pressure. So as he's here, if I actually had the sleeve up, the muscles actually will contract in the tricep and the bicep as you're going in. This stops here, and as you pull down, you actually start gaining positive resistance off your opponent. If you know something, I'm looking at him anymore. You shouldn't have to after you get this for a while, but this leads into him hooking onto my head with the next hand and hooking onto the head. Boom! And here I am, right into an elbow with very little effort, just going in going, oh, how you doing? So when you get that reach around movement, it's very quick. Um, it you guys were at my camp where we came in and we did I'll, that kick and we hooked in and drew through. It's that same general modality. <laughs> when she comes in with a punch, this is where this comes in handy. She comes in with that punch, I come this way, here. Now, a couple of options. I can go here and apply a ton of pressure and tie myself up, or I can come this way, do a hand on, do a hand off, and come around this way. Now I've got that control. And then just because I like her, bang, in the back of the neck. That's where that lock, that's how you get that motion. That's how you get that naturalized thing. So when she's coming in, I'm, we're gonna do the drill together, we're gonna go this way and pull. Pull. And then you start learning to use, you know, different fingers. Use two fingers. Go back to the arms. You can work different angles. You can actually, he and I were actually last night in his, in his chink, which time we're doing this. He was teaching to that side, I was teaching to this side. We didn't even look at each other for how long? How you been? How's your mom? How's your dad? Then we started doing sticking hands. Has anybody ever seen this? This is another training drill. Sticking hands, you come here. And look. So, oh. so we go this way. The objective of this is trying to keep contact with your opponent. And learning partner. where they are. Okay, you start. And your hands, notice I was I started out here. I can come around and he's his objective. Now we're on both on the outside. So the objective of this is to try to keep each other from uh, Yes, I scored! I quit. I win. That's one way to do And then as you do Four that, three. then you that leads into this one where you're sitting here and you're going this way and you're talking and Okay, so tonight in class, we had a good time. We covered this, we covered that. And we're just going around. Do you anybody see the Matrix? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are you saying? Like, he looks so bored. He's like, what am I doing? You done? Bam! And he drops him. That's what we're doing. And so the ladies over here will, will tell you my eyes are closed during that whole thing. Yeah. It's, it's, it's one of those that knowing where your opponent is and kind of what they're gauging. Bruce Lee was huge with this. It's a big Wing Chun thing. And a lot of the Kenpo started in China, then moved over into uh, Parker was in Hawaii. Yeah. And then it came across that way. So you get a lot of like uh, Ohana, uh, Ohana Kenpo, which is a, a larger version of it as well from there. They, they bring it over. Nothing is ever brought into us. Um, for those that are the typical uh, Taekwondo people, Really, General Che was a third degree black belt in Shotokan, and then he did this. Why? Because any Korean in the right mind, oh, I'm sorry, Japanese Korean. We do Korean. By the way, Korean karate, please know that. Korea, karate. There's no such thing. Karate, Japanese term. So when you get into that, that mindset, everything plays off everything else. There's nothing that is pure. This is the most purest art. No, it's not. Anything that you can do follows out from something else. Even the, everybody goes, oh, well, this came from China. Uh, actually, it came from Bordi Dharma, who was a monk from India. He brought it to China because the, the monks are so busy meditating all the time that they started getting muscle atrophy. Yeah. So then I started exercising, and then I broke out in their pants. You should go We're going to end on two really cool things. Yes! So I Me choking out. Close. Come here. <laughs> It's not you choking out, that would be cool. Things in the martial arts a lot of times deal with a lot of mental aspects. You gotta train your brain as well as your heart and your body. You're gonna be our witness, okay? And you too. So you come right here beside your dojin, you come right here and watch me. Oh! You know what I'm doing? Oh! I'm watching him. Yep, you're watching him. <laughs> now, when he stops, when, when I tell him to stop, you're going to show everybody how far into my throat he got. Okay. Okay? Go ahead. <coughs> how far do you get? 
That's not an exaggeration. He, literally, that's a cough point. When he touches it, makes me cough. How far in did he get? Probably. Okay. Watch. Hang on. <coughs> that's it. That's all there is to it. The other cool thing, that's all mind over matter. What you have to picture is, you know what a grist mill is? It's a big wheel, sucks water up in a bucket, brings it in, and powers it. That's how we make grits down south. You picture a gristmill. The energy he's giving me, I'm taking, giving back to me. The other cool trick, and I think you saw, I know, I, I think you saw it at the summer camp. Let me use you. It's all right, he's already dead, so it's fine. Yeah, he's already dead, he won't go. Lay down. <laughs> You're healed. Yeah, you will be. In the back of my ambulance, this is about how much room I have. Clear! Very fine. Yeah, go get my monitor, quick, pow! So when people want to fight, I'm usually sitting here, and if he starts fighting, I ain't got a whole lot of room to run. I ain't got a place to go. It's 20 years I had to figure out how I'm going to keep from getting my butt kicked by somebody who's not in their right mind without hurting them too awful bad. <laughs> Sit up. Sit up. Come on, get up. Seriously, get up. Here, let me try. Get up. <laughs> get up. Seriously, try. Get up. And he said to He's trying. Lies. He can't. There you go. Now get up. <laughs> kind of cool, huh? Yes. <laughs> the reason that works is you're going between the rib. You're going between the ribs, okay? There's what's called a neurovascular bundle. There's blood vessels and there's nerves there, okay? You physically cannot do this to yourself and make it hurt because your body will not let you hurt yourself as much as I can hurt you. And I'm not hurting you, literally. How, how hard was I pressing? Pretty hard for you. It's because I don't like you. No, <laughs> you can <laughs> feel it, you're dead. Like look, how hard am I pressing? Barely, right? Barely. Barely, right? Feel into it. Barely. Yeah, that's hard. If you feel this, do you want to get up? No. You're going to literally lay there. It's the funniest thing. Come here, lay down. It's the funniest thing when I've, when I've got a patient who's not in their right mind, and they're trying to get up, and I'm just sitting there. They're fighting me, they're struggling, they're trying to get up, and I go, lay down! And my partner's looking at me like, what are you doing to him? And I'm like, Ancient Chinese secret. <laughs> <laughs> and if you do chest, and if you really want to confuse him, if you really want to throw your partner for a loop, you go like this. Because now he's looking at her and she's going, why does he look like he's about to die? I'm like, because I'm knee deep in his chest and I'm going for his heart. <laughs> <laughs> the reason that these pressure points work, sit up cross legged, Indian style, if you will. It, for those of us that are over the age of like 13, do you remember Tiananmen Square? Do you remember the news, how it looked, and, they, and CNN came out and they had to retract it because they, they praised the Chinese Red Army for helping the protesters off the streets? Does anybody, did you ever watch that? If you zoom in on that, what they're actually doing is just coming out there, get up, in Chinese. But they're not. These guys are protesting. So what they do is it looks like they're helping them. I'm on his shoulders, looks like I'm grabbing here. What I'm really doing is just going, get up. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they get them up. It's hidden. It's, it sucks. It's it right does. behind the earlobes in a little notch. That's what they're doing. They're going in and they're hitting in and pulling up. <laughs> one of the, I showed this at camp and Sensei Brooks was like, oh! So he knows which one I'm doing. Oh, dear. Yeah, like, <laughs> I, I think you, you probably, you know which one I'm getting ready to do. <laughs> okay. Rest in peace, Isaac. Mm -hmm. oh, rest in peace. Both of them simultaneously. See where my thumbs are free? She's oh, like, oh, I know where it's going. She's like, she's, like, I'm, she's like, I'm about to throw up, and you're about to go nightly. <laughs> Hurts, don't it? Yeah. <laughs> in and down. It's not on the bone, it's on the sinus cavity. It's the hollow spaces where all that snot comes from. That's what I'm pressing on. I'm going this way. Yo, buddy, it's not a nice thing to do to somebody. But when that comes in handy, women. Abusive spouse. Oh, sounds, sounds very ordered. Woman! Woman! I, no, I was addressing you. I, I, I hate... Ladies, can you please... Yeah, ladies, can you please come over? Sorry, I'm a hillbilly. 
<laughs> Come here, woman. Come here, woman. I yell. Abusive spouses. Domestic abuse is horrible. But what do they do? They like to pin you up against that wall, and I got nowhere to go. So I'm just going to go here. <laughs> now, when you're back to the wall, you do what you have to do to get away, and that is a great one. Even if you only hook one and push, they're still going to... Whoa! It's amazing. Also, if you consider that from a... Uh, I hate going about the sexual assault progressive. If you've got the guy sitting between your legs and he's here... It so works if they're just over the top of you, they're not gonna, they, they cannot assault you from this position. It doesn't happen. They've got to bring themselves a little closer, which means your arms can easily get right up behind there. And in the case where he lifted up and back, you're going to do that and you're going to turn the head and his whole body is going to come out this way. And you're just going to be able to tilt them right off you. Now, again, for that, if your hands slip up into the eye socket, oh, well, yeah. <laughs> um, I would like to, I'm going to point this out and in law enforcement, I'll tell you this. And I believe uh, Washington State and I think maybe Nevada, I think are the only two, I'll have to look up Nevada for sure, but Washington State, there are only two states in the entire U.S. that does not look at rape as a lethal assault. Which means if I am trying to rape you, you can kill me legally. So that whole plus one stuff from earlier tonight goes right out the right window. Right out the window. Game now, off. I'm going to add on one small thing to pressure points, which is fun. Anybody ever see the old uh, U.S. Army movies where the guy sneaks up behind the guy's head and just breaks his neck like nothing? And everybody's like, well, that's not possible. We're going to pick on the big guy! We're pick on him! <laughs> yes! <laughs> All right, cool. He's so, been, he's been, he's if, been I, if I go up, and you always see this as he goes in to do the neck break, the guy sneaks up behind me, he's like, yeah! And he goes up, <laughs> right? So if I go in and I grab your head, what's your immediate reaction when I grab you before? Because you can see me coming. I'm a green bird. Are you kidding? But the second I reach around and grab you, look what look at his shoulders, look at his head, his whole body. Amelia goes stiff. So if I do this and I try to turn his head, don't let me turn your head. Right? I call like, these my suit catchers for those that have goatees. That are, well, he's perfect. That little area where the hair doesn't grow. I'm gonna take this finger and I'm gonna put it in one of those little notches. This sucks. So if I'm here and I dig into this, now this is what you see in the movies. And he goes up, right? Now I want you to just don't let me turn your head. Wow. There is no fight back. There, there's no. He's like, no, no. And, we're deal, and now I'm going to deal with him because he's a little taller. Now stand up. Because this works too. Because if I go in now, again, I need to take something that's going to be a little bit bigger. So if I'm here and I reach up, I get in that pressure point. He comes to me. It doesn't matter how tall you are. I go in, I get in that pressure point. You can do it yourself. If you're facing forward, take that knuckle, put it in here, and press back at that 45 degree angle, like going here and going behind your earlobe. You do that, you dig in, and it is automatic. You want the other side. So if I'm here, I'm digging right into that. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, nice. But look what happened to this whole body when you do this. The whole body ends up going backwards. This is a little bit of a But if I'm here, I get into that pressure point, I dig in and <laughs> back. If you're dealing with, so say you're a smaller person, and you know maybe he's trying to attack your buddy, and you're just like, and this would be more realistic for fun. You come up here and you're just like, stop! And you get right, oh, look what happens here. You jump on his back, you dig that in, he will little, it'll collapse. It just is not nice. And I didn't jump on his back, I just stepped up, got in that point and pulled down. You go with me. So when you're dealing with getting into those points, this is just nasty. Because the thing is, too, is it works. Like, he did the one where you're behind the ears. Oh, I'm right here. So he's here. <laughs> with my back as well, and he does that same thing. He's here. So maybe we're a little shorter. I can go here. <laughs> you hear that? That's Careful. Not, we want him to come back to the summer camp. That's <laughs> not. Did I hit him? And what does he say? Ah! Instant! But he was already foot and half back before that pain actually truly registered where he was auditory with it. Ah! At that point, I'm like, I'm out of here. The other thing that we get into real quick is, remember how we were just doing that hooking drill? If he's got me pinned, ladies, this is fun. All right, all the karate in the world. Right? Not happening. Come on. 
All your karate means nothing when you're face to face with a cement ball. Here we go. We gotta help you. Castance. Transitional. Castance. Pan. Face plant. Walk away. Walk a samurai. <laughs> so when you get into those pressure point movements, it's easier to try to go for the, the, the easy ones to get into. Back of the earlobe is huge, especially when you're going there. There's also a set underneath the jawline. So say you have, you're not able to get the height to get up into the eye socket because he's a tall dude. You can make yourself open in here. So if he's here and he's got that, I can get into this point, but if he's pinning me back, I'm not, I'm a little short on this. But if I tuck in here and I get into the jawline, I can move him back hitting those. And what you're doing is you follow the, the, the point of the jaw, go about a third of the way down and, and just underneath the jawline. If you press, ooh, that hurts. If you press up, I found it. If you press up, you'll instantly feel it. It's like, oh, that is just not nice. So as you're hitting in, for you, I'm gonna find the tips of the jaw, go about a third in, and I'm digging right here and there. And it's not a very nice point to get into. You'll see a lot of uh, Northern Shaolin where you see that movement come in. That's what he's doing. I'm not digging into your throat. I'm literally, come here, so I'm literally going in and I'm right here into that point. I don't have to rip his throat out, which everybody sees. I'm here and here. The fingers are making a circle. So as I'm here, you see that movement where they strike out here. I'm literally going into this point and, and backing him up. I don't have to kill him. And my final technique for the night. Um, who, who was having an issue with that arm bar here? Who, who? You weasel out of that one? All right, come here. So those that have this point, and you've got EQ, as we call it, in. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. <laughs> Crap, it's gone. Oh, well, never mind. So we get EQ. So what do you do? This just doesn't hurt, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. So you can transition in an EQ really easily. So for here, I can step here. What I want to do is I want that thumb on my chest. So I'm here, I've pinned this into this one here, all right? So from this point, I'm gonna pull this elbow into me and I'm gonna put my hand in the shoulder. Bet that worked. Uh-huh. Now, from here, oh, let's move you out. Well, it's just walk, 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 I don't wanna smack you into the wall, that's just me. So we deal this out of being that passive aggressive. So I, again, this is the fun one. What, what's his mind on? His grip, right? So, thanks. <laughs> exactly. I don't like thinking about your grip. Pow! Here, across. When I do this, everybody has a tendency of here and here. Um, who, I think I was working with you when you were trying to do the Shihomagi on um, uh, Mr. Mitchell. I told you, closer the better. So everybody tries to do the arm bar from this position and it doesn't hurt it. Difference is, is as you get that arm bar, keep that thumb to your body. Now look where your shoulders are at. Now we're not applying a lot of pain to this, but go ahead and stand up. Yeah, good luck with that. And so then if he's got that moment where I don't have that and I'm a little higher up and he's here, if I go in here and I just grab, still got that same grip, right? Watch this. Oh, so sorry. <laughs> oh, Jesus. So I can literally, whatever, but from here, I'm just gonna take this hand, I'm gonna press in, I'm gonna turn this in, I'm gonna put my hand on his shoulder, here. From here, he goes down. Look where the head's at, I love this. So I go from here. This is the point where I take my handcuffs out, I put that one on here. And then if he doesn't want to bring his other hand around because he's being mean, I just dodge this up like, oh, see, look at that. <laughs> Stop resisting. <laughs> but the thing is, is that where his hand's at this position, if I try to pull into this hand and he doesn't want to come back and he tries to resist us, go ahead and put your hand up. So I try to pull this. Watch that so I reef this hand up. Yeah. That instantly comes back. So that's why you see a lot of law enforcement. When you see him doing handcuffs, you see him come in. Once they get this down, they'll slide up. I'll bring his knee right here. This does not feel good. From this point, this arm pretty much is just limp. I can like take this with one finger and set it up there. Set the other handcuff in. Now, if you've got hinged handcuffs, which is so much better, we call, we, we call this our starting the car. Because if I got the hinge handcuff, by the way, hinge handcuffs work like this, so they don't have that chain. I'm here, and we get this. So I've got the handcuff on here, and that other hand is sticking out here. Oh, yeah, thank you. 
end up. So what I want you guys to try to do real quick on this is to go in from EQ to an EQ. And it's real simple. Pick on this. So get here. If he's got his grip, first thing, hi. I don't want to think about this anymore. Pop shot over here. From here, I'm going to turn. Everybody wants to peel this whole darn hand off and be like, yeah. Too much space. If his hand's here and I pop him, I just turn my body. Watch the motion here. See, I got him pinned into me. I get my thumb in here and I press him down. As I turn my hips and move, I keep that thumb and I grind it into my shoulder. Now he sees, look, no motion. Thumb is pinned to me. From here, I bring the elbow up, turn in, hand on his shoulder. Notice what the thumb hasn't ever done. Left my chest. From this position here, and again, remember I said about, you know, you, you, you know, beat a bigger guy and you immediately find religion. This one will make you pray really quick because the second I do this, oh, look at that, supplication. <laughs> But so from this point, once I get this in, I lock this out. Now he can try to go to the ground with this and stop the pain from happening. I'm just gonna follow him right down here. And he'll just go with me. But as we go in from this position here and I get this movement, I'm only gonna slide to the head. I'm gonna grab your shoulders later. And I'm just gonna turn in. He's here. And here we go. Now if you don't have handcuffs, you can pump them on the side a couple times. Now, the cool part with this is to be doesn't matter how big you are. He gets his grip. Okay. I come in here. So if he's got his grip and I come in here. You got I felt something. Go ahead. Thumb's still here. From this position, now he's a bigger dude. I'm not gonna just be able to sneak him in like I did those. I'm gonna just a little come in here. From this position, thumb still attached. Hi. I press him down. From here, I just turn out, it goes into the shoulder, bring him around. From his position, I'm gonna loop this back out because he's big. And here we are again. Olay! Yucky, if you have a little brother sticker. 